Greetings, folks. This is Joseph A. Sabora, and I'm about to review the latest of the Star Wars film franchise called Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's a new follow up to Star Wars The Force Awakens, where we all left off with Rey, Finn, and Poe along with all the other characters, um, including some of the old characters from the Star Wars original trilogy and several of the new ones that we're getting. This time around, it takes place where it left off when Rey finally gets to meet uh, Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Master, who's now becoming the former Jedi Master. To date. And we begin this, the focus on what uh, Kylo Ren is about to go next. Even though they, they make contact with Rey and, and they're trying to see what, what they're going to do to to rule the whole universe. Or, or what it seems. <sighs> yeah, between the, the Resistance and the First Order. Because we didn't learn that uh, Kylo Ren is um, the son of of Han Solo, which one of the biggest uh, surprises of all time, and still disappoint me to this day, as I never forgot. Because two years ago, and and I know I didn't want to give it away, and I'm glad I didn't. But I still never forget the, the moment that this happened. So now, um, Harrison Ford is no longer reprising his role as Han Solo because now they killed him off. Yeah, there you go. That's the biggest surprise. So now, now we have to deal with what's going on this time between Rey and, and Luke Skywalker on how to train and and how to go after Kylo Ren yeah, before he starts to do something completely wrong while he's working with Supreme Leader Snork. So yeah. Well, it's getting good reviews so far uh, from critics. Even people say they, they praised it as being the, the next best thing since The Empire Strikes Back. In a way, well, the audience reactions uh, felt pretty uh, diversive. Like, they're feeling like there's some good moments, but it just ends up becoming a failure. And to me, I think it's it's all the way around. I think it's just, for me, I'm, I'm giving a bit of a mixed review on this one because... It's not as good as the previous film, uh, The Force Awakens. I mean, yeah, that movie had its problems too. Don't get me wrong. But it also, um, it's not as good as all the other Star Wars movies as I could think of. I mean, definitely not as good as the original trilogy, that's for sure. But it still has its good moments here and there. But then I just feel like they tried so hard and and I think they failed on so many levels that I think they need to fix it. Because this movie has many problems compared to The Force Awakens. So, so I, I hate to do this though, but on the other hand, I don't hate the movie. I don't think it's that bad, to be honest. But it could have been a whole lot worse. I mean, Holiday Special is still a piece of shit. But granted, at least they have their qualities. I mean, they had an awesome music video. They had a great uh, cartoon that they got. The animated uh, sequence. Where we get to see the, the Star Wars characters. And we actually get an introduction to uh, Boba Fett. The Bounty Hunter, which he now became a very popular character. 
which suddenly he was introduced later on in The Emperor Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, everybody loved that character. So, <clears throat> so it's so in this one, it just feels like after uh, the reveal of um, Han Solo's son, that's where I feel like it just takes a turn for the worse on its own level, and that's why I'm having some issues here because I'm starting to hate this character now after what he did. There are other new characters that we got, and, and now they're working together with with all the older Star Wars characters. I mean, one of yeah, a few of them left already. I mean, we still have C-3PO and R2-D2, as well as Chewbacca. But we only have um, a few left, especially since we just found out that uh, Carrie Fisher passed away last year. And this is going to be a tribute to her. Is um, she's always been one of the greatest actresses. Um, coming from the daughter of actress, legendary actress uh, Debbie Reynolds, and she passed away too at the same time. Except she died a few days after her death. So now they're together again in heaven. Yeah, so it's really sad. So, all I can say is, uh, may the force be with her. So now she's free. But anyway, so now uh, in the new sequel, it's being written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who happens to work uh, on two films with Joseph Gordon-Levitt called Brick and Looper. I've seen Looper, by the way. It's actually uh, a very good film. This, it has some problems, too, but that's okay. Um, it, it was a fun action flick. Uh, it was a fun sci-fi action flick with... Uh, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis, along with Jeff Daniels and Emily Blunt, you know, from TriStar and Film District. It's pretty underrated now, um, when it came out in 2012. Uh, wish I could find that movie. Anyway, so now he took over for directing this movie after uh, Colin Trevorrow, the same director who gave us um, Jurassic World, and he also directed Safety Night Guarantee. Unfortunately, he went on to direct a movie called The Book of Henry, which came out recently. It's the one with uh, Jaden uh, Leiberhart, along with Jacob Tremblay and Naomi Watts, along with uh, Silver Silverman and Magley Zeckler, which is basically. Um, I guess I could say it's more of a, more like a similarity to a better film that came out in 1992 called Radio Flyer with Elijah Wood and Joseph Mazzello where, where they had to deal with uh, an abusive boyfriend of their mothers so they're trying to escape so they had to build um, a Radio Flyer plane you know, out of the wagon so that way they could fly away. So they won't get abused anymore. Well, it's it's a similar concept, but the difference is it's the it's the girl that's getting abused, the girl next door to where they live, and now they now they're trying to find a way to to stop them. Well, it was a disappointment. Um, I saw the movie recently, and I didn't really care for it, so. I understand why there are people who did enjoy it, mostly because it's underrated. I was trying to see the similarities here, and I just I just kept thinking of Radio Flyer when it comes to this. So, <laughs> but even Radio Flyer is an underrated movie, so because it was a better film anyway, and had a great idea about child abuse and childhood and all, and brothers working together. It's always nice to see what they're trying to do. Yeah, I, I'm. I know I'm, I'm. I'm a bit off topic on this one, but that's because 
they were going to have the same director, but because of his failure, Ryan Johnson took over. <laughs> so, sorry. And by the way, I did pick up um, Star Wars The Force Awakens on Blu-ray as a, a Walmart exclusive collector's edition. Yeah, it's, it has all the extras, everything, nice packaging. You get the DVD included as well. It's a perfect Blu-ray gift to own. Um, I have seen Rogue One, the Star Wars story, which is a spin-off in the Star Wars film franchise. It's actually very good, too. Um, I haven't reviewed it yet, but if I ever get a chance, I probably will. I just wish I could pick up the Blu-ray already. I went to see the movie with my father because he's a big fan of Star Wars. He's always been ever since he saw it when he was a, when he was a kid. <laughs> and he, he's been a big fan ever since. I mean, he introduced me to Star Wars at a very young age, you know, along with my brother Jason and and my sister Eileen. <laughs> so we we went to go see it um, on Tuesday. Um, we had a good time. I mean, even though I I have issues with the film, let's get right to it. It stars. Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Annie Serkis, Lupa de Nanyo, Domino Gleason, Anthony Daniels, Kelly Marie Train, with Frank Oz, Laura Dern, and Benicio Del Toro and it's written and directed by Ryan Johnson and just to give you a warning there might be spoilers in this review so if you haven't seen the movie um, my advice is don't watch the review until you see it but if you have seen the movie then it's okay uh, just to keep that in mind so anyway the story begins with a space battle between the Resistance and the First Order. The Resistance fighters that's being led by General Leia Organa had decided to evacuate their base from the First Order, which apparently leads to um, a counterattack that's led by X-Wing fighter Paul Damien. So the Resistance decided to jump into hyperspace to escape, but unfortunately the First Order that's run by Kylo Ren and General Hux he pursues them by using a tracking device so suddenly Kylo had destroyed all the resistant fighters but hesitated to fire the lead resistance ship since um, her mother is there because yeah, after all Kylo Ren is Han Solo and Leia's son So the TIE fighters themselves destroyed the ship, where the only one that survived was Leia. Well, barely. So she basically flew out into the ship, and she was left unconscious. While Vice Admiral Holdo suddenly takes over in command. But disapproving Holdo's uh, persuasive strategy, uh, which she was doing, Poe along with Finn, BB-8, and a mechanic named Rose Tico, which she has a sister who's killed during the battle, you know, with all the bombs that's being the shoot down. She also has uh, a crescent uh, gold medallion. So yeah, they both have it, so, so they, they can be remembered by. So they suddenly escape and evoke a secret plan to disable the tracking device. Um, so, and not only that, but be able to help their friend Ray. So meanwhile, Ray suddenly winds up arriving at a remote island called Art 2, which they begin to find the location after The Force Awakens, you know, where they where they're trying to find the the puzzle pieces together of the map so that way they'll find out where Luke Skywalker is located. 
So they arrived along with Chewbacca and R2-D2 on Han Solo's Millennium Falcon to find Luke Skywalker and have Rey uh, train with him. But unfortunately, Luke hasn't been himself um, ever since uh, he's all alone on the island. He wanted to be able to rest over there all alone until he dies. Mostly because uh, he can't forget uh, all the failures that he's been having uh, once uh, he was a teacher at the Jedi Academy, you know, teaching all the students on becoming a Jedi. Until what suddenly led, led to a tragedy that actually killed um, half of the students and burned down the Jedi Academy uh, by all the First Order TIE fighters and everybody. So he just never forget what happened and decided not to become a Jedi anymore. So now he's all left alone and drinking the alien mother's milk and just spends more time all alone trying to uh, trying to forget the past but then Ray is just trying to follow him around everywhere he goes and he's telling him to go away um, for the past uh, few days uh, that is until he begins to see R2-D2 and he saw a holographic image of Leia which at the time she was a princess as you may saw in, in Star Wars A New Hope which is episode 4, yeah, it used to be the first movie so that's how we discovered and of course we have Chewbacca you know just basically just hanging around while he's being attacked by all these porks which looks more like those uh, <laughs> all these um, gophers yeah they look like gophers though but they're actually basically just sort of a mix between a gopher and, and a duck uh, or, or at this rate a bird too uh, so they, they were just tiny little birds with big bulgy eyes and they squeak and, and <laughs> I gotta admit that was a pretty funny scene but so yeah plus he even started cooking one of them because he was hungry well anyway so after all of that Luke decided to teach Ray anyway on how on all the basic steps of becoming a Jedi but we all know that Rey has all the powers that she needs because she has the force so she knew all of this um, that is until she started to use the force on Kylo Ren you know commanding or this Rey Kylo Ren just put the force on on Rey and trying to contact them from the island because while Kylo Ren is working with Supreme Leader Snork on their next battle anyway she began to explain how much on um, why that he killed his father and he also told him how much of a monster he really was and why is he doing all these evil things so he begins to send some answers here and, and then Kylo is just tricking Rey on how to work together as a team to rule the universe and try to destroy the resistance but but she didn't want to be part of that Ray also was trying to locate uh, her parents too but but even she's having trouble so then but then when she began to learn the loose secret behind Kylo Ren because after all there was a tragedy that happened that destroyed um, his Jedi Academy where he teaches all the students and actually killed all the and slaughtered all the students that's the main reason why he refuses and also he was even threatening to kill Kylo because he's, he begins to see the dark side in him and that's what led to this. So because of that, uh, Ray refused to, to help continue training with Luke and decided to leave. Well, Luke is just basically burning all the books that he had and his temple. 
with the help of the ghost of Master Yoda. So then Hordo reveals a plan to deceitfully evacuate the remaining of the resistance by using all these smart transports. So, but of course part of her actions just pretty much presume that, that she's basically a coward. That Paul decided to um, to investigate the mutiny and decided to and try to help along with Rose, Finn, and BB-8 to travel to Canto Bright with the help of a hacker named DJ. Yeah, because he basically knows uh, all the secrets and how to how to get them out because they were actually trapped uh, while they were in the casino. And then they begin to see uh, that there's animals out there that's being you know, tortured and all that. So they're trying to save that animal before they're trying to get into the ship that they were looking for. So that way they, they can go back and, and save the resistance and, and try to go after the First Order. Um, while Ray decided to go after Kylo Ren which apparently he he had kidnapped Ray and so they could lead to um, to Snork so that way they could reveal that way they could reveal the plan before they started an attack and so on and so forth but then the Kylo Ren decided to trick uh, Ray once again about this but she refuses and she decided to leave on her own escape from from him and the rest and that's when they they're ready for another attack yeah I, I'm gonna leave it this way um, but I'm gonna be honest with you this movie had so many problems that I just feel like this might as well just be the weakest of the Star Wars film franchise despite of its good moments I mean, yes, there are good moments in the movie, I'll give you that, but then there are plenty of bad ones. So, this is the main reason why I'm giving this movie a mix. Um, but I didn't hate the film, though. I, I didn't hate it. I just feel like, out of all the work they have done on building the story and having to make this movie as powerful as ever, as strong as it's ever, and even darker as ever, I just feel like, you know, they, they just lost what was once a, a good series. And that's just what's what led to this disappointment that this movie was going for. It's just sad that nowadays I feel like the, the old uh, Star Wars characters as we all know and love, uh, like Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, as well as Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO, and all the rest. It just... I know they're going for a new generation, and I understand. Because this was a perfect start. It's getting worse. And I think that's just sad, because now we won't be able to see the originals again. It almost seemed like it's only one last time that we'll ever get to see them. Especially now that uh, Carrie Fisher passed away and to me that just ruins it it ruins it for me however I'm trying to get into the characters that they got I mean I love Finn Granite and I love Paul along with the BB-8 which is like uh, a huge uh, version of R2-D2 but the BB-8 of course just moves around in a giant ball <laughs> So that, that was a cute character. The problem is, it just doesn't feel like the Star Wars that I know and love. It just now becomes more like the Star Wars for the millennial generation. As much as I hate the word millennial, <laughs> that's exactly what we're going for. Uh, uh, Daisy Ridley, you know, I'm trying to get used to her character as Rey. She's continuing to become basically a female Luke Skywalker even though she's working the train with uh, 
but Luke Skywalker himself. And I know people call her Mary Sue, and she might as well be a Mary Sue. Uh, after seeing about what happened to Han Solo, and I mean Harrison Ford must be laughing on the all the way to the bank already by now. I mean, I, especially if he if he just saw this movie now. This was not a good situation that I'm hearing already because ever since then, I feel like the whole thing is being destroyed because now I'm stuck with his son Ben Solo, yeah, which is Kylo Ren. I'm starting to hate this character now. I really am because he's not only uh, wooden and an asshole. I just feel like, man, I just wish this guy just fucking die already. I'm sick of this character. He's, you know, I was hoping he was going to be the strongest character next to Darth Vader. He'll never be. He's just another typical hipster. That looks like a pancake face. Um, I'm sorry I had to insult him, but... You know, this is why... I'm having some hard times dealing with Adam Driver as an actor because he's not... Because I think he's one of the most wooden actors I've ever seen. Yeah, say what you will about Hayden Christensen and... And even the... <laughs> Ryan Reynolds when it comes to wooden actors. I'll take Ryan Reynolds any day. And I'll definitely take uh, Hayden Christensen over Adam Driver. I mean, yeah, there are a few films that he had done that were good. I mean, yeah, even though I didn't really care for him much in, in Midnight Special, which I saw him in. But he's just, uh, I'm just... I'm just having some vital signs when it comes to this guy. I mean, but as far as I'm concerned, he's really bad in this. And it just shows. Um... John Boyega, as uh, Finn, isn't given nothing to do in this movie. It seems like he's being uh, treated like shit, mostly because even though there was some comedy elements of him just uh, you know, swinging around uh, <laughs> uh, on a suit that suddenly is leaking water, I gotta admit that was pretty funny, but still, <laughs> it seems like he's now becoming a running joke because, it, because this was a character... That I really enjoy. I mean, he's a strong character. We begin to learn his sequence when he was once a a stormtrooper, and now he actually saved the life of an X-wing fighter named Poe. So it also proves that you know, out of all the all the tragedies and all the things that happened while he was a stormtrooper, he knew that this was wrong. So he changes his ways. So he wants to become a hero. I mean, after working with uh, Captain Phasma for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but he finally gets his revenge at the end, too, thank God. But I just wish he was treated better in this movie. That goes the same with Paul, too. I mean, I wish he was treated better. It seems like the only one who can actually do right is, is BB-8. I know because there's even a scene where he actually actually had in control too, and he knows how to had to take one of the um, the the ATAT -AT walkers right there. <laughs> and I gotta admit that was really cool and clever that he did. So that's sad. And as for the the mechanic named Rose Tico, that's played by Kelly Marie Train. She started to get on my fucking nerves. I'm gonna be honest with you. I know she's she's supposed to be um, the toughest sidekick to actually try to help, uh, you know, Finn and everybody else out. I know they're trying to escape too, because he didn't. She didn't want to be left behind even after she lost her sister. And I I feel bad for her too. But at the same time, why did she have to be so fucking annoying? I mean, she she pisses me off. It's like, I, I know she was trying to do something to, to help a poor animal from being attacked and all that, but, but the fact is, Finn is just there trying to save his best friend, Ray. 
and they're and they're trying to find a way to stop uh, the first order, and and then it's just a waste of time, because they had to spend like over two hours just trying to get to the next big thing, and that's what happened. <laughs> uh, and of course, Benicio del Toro playing the DJ is just is pretty much wasted. I mean, although he, I gotta admit he was he's a great character playing the, a code breaker who stutters and no matter what he does, I mean he's very clever what he what he could but even he could have done better um, sure we still have uh, Chewbacca but he's just basically there just for comic relief by having to deal with all these porks around so nothing much, I mean he doesn't do anything as much as he could. That's a shame. Uh, and R2-D2 was just there. And, and even um, C-3PO, which was over there at um, the Resistance um, hideout uh, with, with Leia and all the rest. You know, he, he, he's, just, he's just going around just talking about what's happening and, and he's trying to find a perfect way to get out of there, but of course, Paul just tells him to shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never tell uh, C-3PO to shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I really didn't like the way they handled uh, Luke Skywalker in this movie. That's played by Mark Hamill. In fact, even Mark Hamill himself hated this movie because he didn't like the treatment of his character. They made him look like a stubborn, miserable old fool. Yeah, I got the line from... <laughs> Well, a little bit from Kill Bill there. And and it's like he refused to help. He, he just wants to stay in, in this remote island before he dies. But at least he he had his help to and his own will to actually, you know, use um, the force and, and the power to actually stop him as he could and try to help uh, Leia and all the rest. Yeah, because he was trying to make contact uh, with Leia. So they get to see each other again. Until the next battle. So, Oh no. Um, it had its funny moments that I didn't mind. That I did enjoy. Like, you know, like there was a scene where, where there was like a creature who actually put in all the, the casino coins in there thinking that... <laughs> That the BB-8 is is a <laughs> is a slot machine. I mean that that was <laughs> that was pretty clever because that's where he, where all these coins suddenly. Uh, <laughs> that's when BB-8 started to shoot all these uh, casino coins uh, on the guards. You know, just when they're trying to take all the prisoners out and trying to trying to save. Uh, yeah, Finn and Rose because they were trapped in there. Have to escape, and there you go. <laughs> also, we got Laura Dern in the movie, yeah, from Jurassic Park. Uh, this, yeah, she plays uh, Amaral Holdo, and I, I'm just gonna say it clearly for her character's sake. She's basically a complete bitch and a coward before suddenly she changes her ways. Yeah, and she was all alone too. And she was the only one that's trying to see how all the, the resistance is trying to go to another planet so they could be safe. Yeah, you know, where they had all these um, crystal wolves. Or coyotes, I think. Yeah, I think they were crystal wolves. Because they were, yeah, they were in a different planet um, where there was a lot of snow, a lot of mountains, and all these crystal Puts the wolves out there. So she's all alone until suddenly the First Order had attacked them. And then she decided to uh, break the sound barrier by actually destroying those ships. You know, which, which on the other uh, First Order ship, that's where, you know, Finn, along with uh, Rose and, and the BB 8, and yes, even the uh, Pole were in the skies, you know, to, to stop them. So lucky for them, they did survive. 
because it was like a huge, huge attack, and, and Finn was lucky enough to attack uh, Captain Freezma. which was great to see her. Well. <laughs> It was also great to see Yoda again, too. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen Yoda after um, The Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, the, the prequels. But I guess they had to throw that in just because now we know where he's been after all this time. Well, we didn't get to see the ghost of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Not even the, all the other ones. Yeah, <laughs> and for what she was given, um, Kara Fisher was fine in the movie, but sadly, you could pretty much tell that she's not looking very well. I mean, especially the way she speaks. Um, but luckily, she was still there throughout the entire movie. But I'm just glad that they dedicated to her. Her performance and everything that she's done over the years. So I'm happy for that and I appreciate it. Uh, back to that, uh, the special effects were very stunning. As usual, it's as good as ever. I love those uh, the shots of how they attacked the ships between the two. Uh, it was very strong the way they did it. And, and um, I gotta admit, I also love uh, the scene at the end of the movie where that they're fighting against uh, the f the First Order by uh, using all these uh, old ships, which actually creates a uh, all that red uh, paint, or I think it was one of those uh, red fools or something. Well, they were using that to uh, cross around, like like it's uh, <laughs> like it's an etch a sketch or or something like that. But um, other than that, though, it's a mixed bag for me. There are good moments, and then there are bad moments, and so on and so forth. So, but it's worth watching um, by any chance. I mean, especially for Star Wars fans. But sadly, other Star Wars fans may be disappointed. So, be it as it may. It's not the worst movie of the year. I've seen a lot of worst movies already this year. that are way worse. In fact, I'd rather watch The Last Jedi over the 2017 remake of Flatliners or Fifty Shades Dumber or even The Bye Bye Man <laughs> come to mind. All these other garbage. But hey, at least it was worth watching and I'm glad I saw it uh, with my father, along with my sister. So they had a good time, and I did too, despite of the problems that I had with this film. So, but either way, um, it was worth it for me. It was fine. There you have it. So that's uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi, and I give it. Two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and may the force be with you. Bye.